So what up guys, it's your boy HD, um, looking rough but decided to do something real quick for the fans who ain't got a chance to read this article that I made. This came about because I'm a career coach now and a lot of times people are reaching out to me about how to get into cybersecurity and on top of other things that I see in the industry um, that I deem is not good advice. So I wrote an article on this uh, two weeks ago basically saying, you know, how are you unsuccessful? And to get into cybersecurity, and we're going to look at that. And it's going to, this video is going to pretty much be how to get into cybersecurity. Here you guys go. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this. Uh, we'll just go in depth about it. But check this out. I'm going to read the first part. Why does it seem so hard to break into cybersecurity? From my personal experience, it took me four years to get my first cybersecurity role. And if it's your first time on the channel, check out how I got my start in cybersecurity right here at the top of the video. Um, I had a sec plus cert and a bachelor's degree and honestly that's not enough to break into cyber um, it happened for me but you know it shouldn't take that long most everyone is intrigued about getting this obscure because you're seeing all these videos on YouTube you know it's the new thing um, and you know it's really people want to make bread and I get it I'm, I'm not mad that you want to make money at all so but let me do this if you don't know what the security plus is let me show you i've like i said i always call security plus a uh, foundational security cert pretty much i believe it will help you understand sec plus uh, and here's some of the reasons why people are getting it you see it on most job descriptions here's the medium annual wage for it and of course, over half a million open cybersecurity positions. Here are the type of jobs that you can get with the SEC Plus, security admin, system admin, help desk manager, network, cloud engineer, security engineer, analyst, DevOps, IT auditors, IT project manager. And business come to your site, so they're wanting you to get their stuff. Now, we're gonna pivot back into price, but Look how expensive this could be uh, for someone who doesn't have, you know, the means to get money to take, you know, all these things. Granted, it's a good investment if you had the money because it eventually will pay off if you stick with it the right way. But let's go back to the thing. So this guy that I made, guys, is a high level, high level roadmap to get into cyber and i've received none but good reviews on it uh, and i keep it vague because it will differ based on what route you want to go to so here's the and, and also let me tell you guys that this is not necessarily in numerical order um, but one of the first things you do need to do is define a career path and the reason why i say that is Put it like this i'm in shreveport right now and let's say i want to go to california by car i can't get there if i do not put in my destination if you don't know what role you want to get to how are you going to get it that's what you need to do and here's the thing a lot of you don't know what role you want to do so here's the cyber career pathways tool i use this in a lot of my consultations with people who do not know what they want to do and look, it breaks it down. You got IT, cybersecurity, cyber effects, intel, intelligence, and then cross-functional roles. So if we click on cybersecurity, look at all these different roles. So let's say we wanted to be a security analyst. What kind of skills would we need for that? So let's do this. Let's do security. This says system security analyst, so we're gonna click on this and see what it says. And so with this site, you also get to read what it would do and see if it interests you. Let's see. Look at all this. Apply security policies to applications that interface with one another, such as business to business. I'm not gonna read all this crap. I'm not gonna lie, guys, because I'll be boring you. Uh -huh. But this is, you know, something if you may or may like, you know, it could tell you what it's connected to. So look, system developer, enterprise architect. This would be uh, probably 
relate to both of these just based off of this definition. Let's go to the defense analyst. Protect and defend. So this would be, and I'm not going off this, but I'll say this would be more, um, more along the blue team, um, probably a lot of monitoring, the operate, maintain, system analysis. Uh, this, this is a very good site, so make sure you check this link out. So this is a site that I, I give to everyone that can help them find their path. And I'm not going to bore you guys any uh, much longer, but it is aligned with uh, the NIST 800-181 framework. So this is a major. This is a major site. I advise you guys to check it out. Now, let's go back. Like I said, so first things first, let's, let's do our define our career path. So now we got our career path. Now we'll go into okay I know where I want to go what skills do I need to do it because like I said a lot of times people are telling you to go get the certs but the certs don't prove anything do you have the same skills that are on the job description and that's what everybody wants to know so look what I say the best way to do this is to get three or five job descriptions and chart the skills that reoccur often in these descriptions this will give you a specific approach to your job search instead of doing a scattershot approach Writing skills down will help you determine what entry level cyber, cyber, I should have said cyber security certification you want to attack first. Pay attention to the job descriptions in different areas of the country as well. I've noticed that the South, East Coast, and West Coast all look for different skills and applicants. And that is true. So, for example, so let's say we looked at this role, right? And um, these are some of the things that Security Plus does teach you about Wireshark. Um, I believe it might mean end map. I've never seen end map, but I know what end map is, and it's with the end. It's a scanning tool. Splunk, Cisco Security Suite, prior experience. But you know, this one is a uh, it's short. It's looking. I don't think this one. They might need somebody with some more experience. I don't think it's really entry level. Let's see if we can find one. Okay, I would I would consider this to be more entry level because it says two plus years. So let's see what are our responsibilities. Managed security agent. Develop and support dashboards, partner with architecture and development teams, troubleshoot fail installs, install. Okay, what are our qualifications? What do we need? So, boom, here's one. Do we know how to work Windows? Do we know how to use Linux? Do we have any experience with information security projects? Have we ever deployed any software as a service solutions? Look, scripting ability with Python or PowerShell, which don't really. Don't worry about this too much. Uh, I don't know why jobs always had us. Sometimes you need this, sometimes you don't. Just depends if it's more engineer type role. Uh, and then it has some stuff like this. Um, Linux Plus, what's that? Microsoft, one of those old search. So uh, these are, you know, just they call them the associate level. And look, knowledge of company security, TTPs, it's preferred but not required. It's a full-time direct hire role. So here's one thing. So you look, we saw. Did we see anything that's that was the same as the other ones? No, we did not. But let's see. Let's keep on going down. I don't know why I this. I don't know why I said senior when I have a filter for entry level. So this one might be really entry level because look, it says college diploma, university degree in the field of computer science, and or three years of equivalent work experience. But then once you have maybe some Cisco certs, we can get past that. I want you to know Perl. Well, we've seen Python come up twice. PowerShell scripting has came up twice. Um, Hands-on knowledge. Once you know stuff about the Ethernet, LAN, WAN. So even though I should say an IT security analyst, it seems like it might be uh, more network security. And that's also something you don't know. Starting out is like pretty much what to look for in these roles, and if it's really entry level or what would you be doing. So key thing is when you interview, I always ask what would your day-to-day -day task be. We're going to try one more, guys. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to bore everybody with this. This is like it's more of a compliance role to me. But let's see what we would need for this role. You need to know your security frameworks. NIST, ISO 2700. Have some project management skills. Security awareness. Yeah, this is more project management, compliance type of, type of role. I don't know why. But I mean, I guess you still can say entry level, but yeah. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back here. 
cool. So we did that part. I, I didn't reach. I did about three. Um, but if I really was doing it a little bit more seriously, I would have wrote the wrote, wrote the the skills down, and then I would start comparing and contrasting which ones showed up all the way. Now here's for the fun one we talked about earlier: cybersecurity certifications. Like I said, truth be told, you don't need all those certs. To me, I think you just need Security Plus to start your journey. Uh, I only recommend A plus and network plus the people who don't have any IT experience whatsoever. And the only reason I say that is because when you do security, and depending on the role you do, but sometimes you need to know about the different departments and how they operate. If you've only ever did maybe security work or security studying, you're going to be confused by some of the things you see because you don't understand it. You don't understand their purpose or their function in the environment and that could cause you some troubles. I was watching uh, Gerald Auger's video with, uh, I forgot his name, Brandon something, but it's a SOC analyst video. And he was talking about how, you know, some people who didn't have really IT experience were blocking things in the environment that didn't need to be blocked because they thought they were malicious, but they don't know about them. That's a thing that really happens. So I would tell you guys to, um, that's the only way I would recognize that. Like I said, and this is not to get on anybody who's gotten a lot of certs. Some people just like to learn, but I've seen countless posts with users having certs, but they can't hire it anywhere. The truth about it is, all certs show is that you can pass a test, but you don't know how to do the job. And there are a lot of scammers out here now, you know, telling you, hey, we'll take the test for you and we'll give you all the credentials. So employers know this. So that makes the value of a cert actually even go down. The best certs are, are practical certs. Uh, I'm, I'm studying for one right now. The certified incident responder from eLearn Security. That is a practical cert. No one can take it but you. So certs like that and other practical certs would be better than a traditional method where you're doing multiple choice and maybe have some simulations. That is my opinion on it. And also, you gotta look at it like this with a cert, it doesn't take a long to study. So, a lot of people think that they can get a cert and then they can go get a job. When, if that's all you did, you maybe study for a month or two, you're doing two months of studying, you're about to get a high paying job. And sometimes that works through networking, but most of the time it doesn't work like that. Uh, this is a serious industry and you have to treat it as such. Education is big. I've noticed the rise of cybersecurity boot camps and I think those are great. Uh, they're more focused on exactly what you want to do. I'll just say they can be pricey, so try to find the best one for you. I always advise self-study. Always, always just pay attention to the fine print. Sometimes they're guaranteeing you get a role afterwards. That's not always the case, so just just do your due diligence and read honest reviews of these things, man, because some of these people only want to get money out of you and they don't really have integrity. And it's hard to find in this industry because, you know, everybody's trying to get in. So they're buying stuff from everybody. And and a person who doesn't know anything doesn't know that. And they're just throwing money down the drain. A cert with a boot camp and lab experience can help you, can show your passion to employers, can show like you're serious that you you wanted to get specialized in a certain cert, I mean, a certain field. So like I said, they could be beneficial. I don't always advise people to go to college because honestly, the first two years of college are a waste uh, because sometimes you're taking classes you already took before. And yeah, that I, I'm, from personal experience, I didn't do good at any of my non-major classes because I, I wasn't motivated to take them. I didn't care about them either. So that's a thing that I learned and I'm mostly only interested in stuff that I care about. And I think a lot of people like that, but I'm not gonna tell you to go get 50, 60, $100,000 in debt to get a degree that probably may not get you the job you want. You don't have to do it my way. My way just happened to work for me. That's pretty much how it goes. Find the best way that works for you. Experience. Remember earlier we were seeing the job saying like two years, three years, or however much experience. Don't worry about the requirements, apply anyway. The worst thing they can say is no. The best thing they can say is yes. Shout out to Antoine Matthews for that best thing they can say is yes thing. But that's the best thing they can say. Now, how do you go about getting experience? It's tricky. Um, I can put it on here, internship, you can volunteer, CTFs, and more. I always suggest people, like on my channel, I have a video of me doing a lab, and I was working in Splunk, boss of the SOC, incident response stuff. 
if you are able to record yourself doing some of the same things that you possibly do at certain positions, send those to recruiters. When you're reaching out for these jobs, they can show them to the manager and it's OK. I saw you know how to do this. And then they probably just uh, try those things out. You got a lab every day. You got, you, it's, put, it's like if you're trying to get into a, a new career, put your best foot forward. Like if, if I wanted to start boxing every day, I'm going to have to work on probably the same thing over and over again. Fundamentals. The key word is fundamentals. A lot of times people forget the fundamentals and then their career plateaus if you never forget the fundamentals and then focus on the small things you'll always have a career and that's with the sports that's with the life same thing so take that concept everywhere you go resumes uh, I, I see this resumes right here um, this is a this is a big one right here uh, a lot of times I think some of you guys are overselling yourselves you're having a lot of stuff on your resumes a lot of wording on there saying a lot of stuff that doesn't really mean anything pretty much your, your resume also does is just highlight some of your skills add only your technical skills add accomplishments kind of summarize what you did and if you don't have experience put you know let's say for instance you, you didn't go to school you didn't go to boot camp but you did cyber courses put your cyber courses as your you know course related work and then talk about those in depth in the interview I'm not saying it's going to always work, but someone will see the enthusiasm and that you actually did some studying with this. But what you don't want to do is oversell yourself and lie. That's two no-nos. This world is super small. And if you get somewhere and they know you lied, it could probably blackball you for a while. So I wouldn't suggest that. I mean, some people get, get by it in certain regions and I know why they do it. But I don't suggest it just because you're putting everybody in jeopardy line. Just be truthful. Because honestly, a lot of companies like to groom people the way they want them to. So if you don't seem like a, a know-it-all, they probably give you a chance just because they can bring you in and, and build you up. So like I said, I personally oversold myself before and I had a hard interview that time. And it happens to experience. And after that, I didn't oversell myself no more. I only had stuff on my resume I could talk about. And that's what you need to do. Only have stuff you can go in depth about on your resume. I don't care if it's two skills. At least you could talk about those two skills, whereas you put 17 things on there that you don't know how to use. No. But last but not least is networking. And with networking, I always, always advocate for LinkedIn. You saw that's the first thing I typed in for jobs. LinkedIn is the only place that lets you interact with managers and recruiters and whoever else. It's, you know, you can you can interact with them, comment on their posts, message them, apply to jobs and reach out to them. That's one of the biggest things because sometimes that's how you get jobs or your or your reputation. Somebody seen something you said somewhere on a post that was like, hmm, that guy seems interesting, and they interview you. You you never know. Uh, if you didn't watch uh, my one of my last podcasts with uh, Antoine Matthews, he was saying how in his interview the guy brought up how he said Pen Test Plus was a fun test, and he said he never heard anyone say that. And so you never know. Utilize this to the fullest. Get active add people in the careers that you want to go into on linkedin and just start networking and talking to people you never know who's watching you'll start seeing people post hey i got positions open and you know getting hiring managers and regular managers letting them be your connections and it can only go up from there and that, and that's pretty much been me kind of just dissecting this article i didn't want to get too long-winded only because you know I know you guys don't watch too much of this stuff, but if you made it this far, I appreciate you. If it's something that I missed in the video, uh, let me know and I, I can reply back in the comments. If you need a consultation, please feel free to uh, check out my site, textualconsulting.com and book you a 30 minute consultation and we definitely can help you get on the right path. If you need a resume, same thing, LinkedIn revamp, you know, I can do it all for you, but hey, I appreciate you.